What's up guys? Welcome back to News Wave. So it's Friday and we got Resident Evil out today, so it's uh, it's going to be a weekend. We'll, we'll say that. Then we got Kingdom Hearts next week. We're going to take a look at some of the reviews very quickly for Kingdom Hearts here. And um, we also have to take a look at an interesting patent that kind of popped up for Nintendo. It's a 3D patent and it reminded me of a very old YouTube video that was kind of a proof of concept because it almost looks like that's what they were doing with this. It's very odd. We're gonna we're gonna go over that. As always, guys, enjoy these videos. Do the like button. It does help out. We're gonna start today with Final Fantasy X and X2. We talked about it yesterday, where it appeared that part of it would be a digital download. We weren't really sure about the North American version or anything. Well, it looks like we do have clarification now, as Square has pretty much put out the statement saying that it will be digital for X2. 10 will come on the cartridge, 10 2 will be a download code that will be a one-time use code and I guess linked to your account at that point. So it very much so mirrors the same way that it was packaged and sold on the PlayStation Vita, which is a shame because that was the one sticking point is they both weren't on that cartridge. I guess their space constraints, maybe they wanted to fit it on an even like a four gig card, I don't know. The other thought here is that uh, 10 and 10 2 maybe could be sold separately on the eShop, which would be cool because I have a feeling there are a lot of people who would rather just buy 10 and not 10 2. I, I know 10 2 is not viewed as being a great game. It's not a bad game, but 10 is definitely the one that people remember more fondly than 10 2. So if this means that they do put them out separately on uh, on the eShop as uh, separate downloads, that would be cool. But it is a shame that if you buy it physically, you're just getting a code and then 10 on the cartridge. Now, I guess if you want it uh, both physically out of Japan and, and Asia, they will have it physically. So we'll have to see if the language options are intact there. And if they are, technically you could import the physical copy. I actually did that with Akami and that was pretty cool because it was this old like little collector's edition thing, which was neat. So if they do something like that, that'll be fun to import it. And of course, people did the same thing with the Bayonetta collection. Just now, if you pick it up in North America, digital download code for 10.2. We also had a bit more clarification on the MPDs for Nintendo and the Switch. This is from Daniel Ahmed, works over at uh, Nico, who is an actual like analyst and everything. And this is actually what he had to say on Twitter. Here are some stats from Nintendo of America based on US MPD sales data in the US. Nintendo Switch sold 5.6 million units of hardware in 2018. That is up 16% year over year. And this takes the total installed base of Nintendo Switch to 10.5 million in the US. They went on further to uh, talk a bit about how it's doing when lined up with the other systems. So if you take a look there, it says the Nintendo Switch has been on the market for 22 months in the US. When the launches align, the total install base of the Nintendo Switch is 22% higher than the PS4 and 34% higher than the Xbox One, which is pretty impressive considering the Switch has had, a, a, what, a two holidays now? It's basically, it's it's pretty much always one holiday less, I guess, at that point, since the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 launched literally like a month before Christmas when it came out, which again might be something that the two companies might revisit when the next systems come out. Maybe they won't do that this time. I don't know, we'll, we'll see. But still, it shows that the Switch has a massive install base already in the U.S. I mean, we're getting to a point where the U.S.'s install base alone is going to eclipse the Wii U's, like, worldwide lifetime sales very quickly. I mean, we're coming up on uh, the end of its second year, and it might be, like, what, halfway through uh, 2019, and we hear that, oh, it's now past the, the lifetime worldwide sales for the Wii U just in the U.S. So, yeah, well, I'm wondering when Western developers are going to look at that, like an EA, for example, and say, oh, maybe maybe we should put Madden or, on there and NHL on there and stuff. It's still, it's just more games, but usually with sales like these, you start getting, like, a lot of the third-party games, and it seems like the third year... That might be the year of software for the Switch, so we'll see. And we did see the Metacritic scores released for Kingdom Hearts 3, and it was actually about what I thought it was going to be. It was a, I thought it was going to be the high 80s. It actually came in at this time at an 89. Now, more reviews are going to keep coming in, so it could end up at a 90, which I think is very good for that, for that series to have a 90 on Kingdom Hearts 3. We do see it at 89. A lot of people who did review it, a lot of sites said that, yes, the narrative is like the one problem because it is confusing. And yeah, I that it, that is an issue, right? You have to go online and read through a lot of stuff even just to kind of get an idea of what's going on. But the good news here, it does sound like the game is quality. It sounds like the people who are into Kingdom Hearts are going to get a blast out of this. I mean, they're probably going to buy it anyway, you know, regardless of reviews. But to see it have a good Metacritic score 
Despite, we also had those leaks that came out and I didn't really get anything spoiled for me, so that's good as well. But everything looks good here. I'm actually playing it a bit early as uh, Square is actually sending it over a few days before it comes out in the US, so before Tuesday. I'll check it out a bit and then we can kind of talk about it as well. And guys, some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. We're actually gonna start right away with a data mining for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Not necessarily a spoiler for anything being added, whether it comes to like characters or modes or anything. However, it seems to be pointing to a larger update that is going to hit that game. And this was actually data mined by Oatmeal Dome, who we've actually talked about before on here with data mining in the past that was very good and turned out to be exact. And it looks like they are seeing that it is 2.0.0. So a full version upgrade, it seems like, is going to be hitting Smash Bros. Ultimate in the next week. And this is actually making people wonder what is going to be added here. I mean, the thing that a lot of people would expect is that Piranha Plant might be the update. I mean, we know that you need to have him registered and ready to go before the end of this month. And if this does hit in the next week leading up to February, so let's say it's a bit later and it hits like, I don't know, January 31st or even February 1st, then maybe that is when Piranha Plant gets added because of course, after that, you're, you're past the cutoff, right? Where you can't keep, where you can't register for him anymore. Maybe he gets added at that point. There's also thoughts that it could be a large balancing. So a lot of data that they've collect from online battles or just feedback. Maybe they change up different characters, whether they weaken them or strengthen them or change uh, some of their moves up in terms of like inputs and everything. It's, it's a whole thing when it comes to balancing and I would not want to have to be responsible for that <laughs> because no matter what you do, you know, People are going to complain because you might nerf their main or even make their, the, the person that they always fight against maybe make their main stronger, so it's, it's a whole thing there. However, something big appears to be coming to Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now, they did also say, of course, that the replays wouldn't be able to be saved any longer from the previous ones you did, so you want to turn them into, like, video files and everything. You can actually check out the source below to kind of read up more on that. But still, if you're playing Smash Bros. Ultimate now, just know, something big is coming. What? We're not really sure, outside of maybe Piranha Plant, but, I mean, any, anything could really come in here. We could, you could have new stages added randomly, right? You, you could have another character, although I don't know if they would do that. Maybe a new Echo Fighter, even. Maybe they'll finally put Waluigi in and just have him as an Echo Fighter. Probably not. He's already an assist trophy, so he's kind of in the game. But uh, we'll see what happens here. We'll see if it does hit next week, which is interestingly around the time of that investors briefing. So it does, everything that we're hearing about with Nintendo, a lot of it's kind of homing in on right at the end of January. It's, it's an interesting time right now. So we're gonna have to look towards next week for a lot of stuff. Next up, let's talk about WRC8 because it has been announced and it's coming to all platforms. It's coming to the PS4, Xbox One, the Switch, and the PC, and it's always interesting to see a racing game go to the Switch because a lot of us know it's it's without analog triggers, it just has digital triggers, which means it either is fully working or it's not working. So if it's like a pedal, it's either fully pressed or it's not pressed. And the Switch, of course, has its digital triggers, but still, seeing it go to the Switch is pretty cool, and V-Rally was there last year, and WRC has taken, uh, they've taken some time. The last time they came out with a WRC game was back in September of 2017, and this one is coming out in September of 2019. So basically, they skipped the full year, seemingly to work on V-Rally 4, so there's that, I guess. Maybe you picked that one up on a platform like the PlayStation or the Switch and you liked it. Well, WRC appears to be coming back, and this is WRC 8, and they've talked a bit about it, saying that they added a dynamic weather system, which is something that was missing previously. They have over 100 different tracks spread across 14 different countries. And then, of course, you will have the full career mode that allows you to build up your team, as well as customize and upgrade your cars, as I would kind of expect, of course, with a racing game. But this is a rally-style racing game. So when I think of these games, I think of, like, Dirt, for example, which is uh, one that a lot of people know and play, and then WRC. So cool to see this actually coming out because it's, it's been a bit, right? It's been a couple of years and I think some people might have been confused as to what's going on with it because it's more of an annual series, but I guess V Rally was something we wanted to actually like uh, work on and get out there and now they're ready to move over to WRC8 and they've had experience of course working on the Switch with their V Rally games, so uh, I guess WRC8's the next one up. 
and uh, Rally fans can look forward to that coming out in September. Next up, let's talk about that Activision Bungie split again. We actually talked about how there seemed to be some class action lawsuits starting to form after investigations had started up around the situation. So what ended up happening, of course, we all know because you probably heard all of us online, gamers everywhere who were really excited to hear that Bungie and Activision had split. And not only had they split, Bungie made off with the, with the Destiny IP somehow. And here we are now. Think about it, though, from an investor's point of view. One day, everything seems okay. I mean, it could be better, right? Destiny could be making us more money, but we still have this IP that has this great future ahead of us and everything because, you know, they don't, they don't really pay attention to as much to games. But still, they see it as a live service that will continue on that, that Activision has spent a lot of time building alongside Bungie. And then the next day you wake up and, oh... They just split and they're they're getting Destiny? How did this happen? That's what a lot of investors were asking. That's why you see you saw the stock drop because they lost a pretty large source of income or at least, at least future income with the live service. So now two class action lawsuits have been filed and it appears to be moving forward. And they're even calling on people who actually bought stock between different times, which appears to be between August 2nd of 2018 and January 10th of 2019. And the reason they are doing this is they are citing materially false and misleading public statements by the publisher just ahead of that news, almost to pretend like everything's cool, don't worry about it. We're doing great. And then, oh, wait, nope. You know, we're splitting with Bungie. They're taking Destiny. Uh, you figure they would have known this was at least happening. And of course, there's always the possibility that they were getting their stocks and everything in order to sell right away. Uh, so that they could be the first. You never know about these things, right? And that's why they investigate. And now we have this class action lawsuit for people who bought in a stock unknowing that there was going to be this big split. And trust me, it affected Activision big. Affected Bungie too, but in, I guess in a better way, but it had to have hurt Activision. I mean, we hear about them cutting back costs with Blizzard and they, they shed Bungie essentially, which again, turns out to be good, at least so far for Bungie from the outside looking in, it does. So I don't know what's going on with Activision and they're doing some, their weird shady business with Call of Duty and uh, it's an odd time over there, but I can't imagine two class action lawsuits is uh, making things any better. And our last bit of news, let's talk about this weird 3D patent that was uh, published and made public for us to look at from Nintendo. And you're gonna see this patent and you're gonna think, what is going on here? I'm gonna talk to you a bit about it. And I'm actually gonna point out what it reminds me of because we have seen this before in action completely, at least from what I'm gathering here we have. And uh, it almost looks like Nintendo had the idea to also do that same thing, and they're working on it. Now, usually when these patents come out and they're public, it means that it's not necessarily still being worked on, or it's something that is being pursued exactly as we see it. However, it can give us an idea into what Nintendo is thinking and what they might be working on in the background in their Willy Wonka factory of an R&D setup over there. You know, their whole R&D department is probably insane. But here's the patent. Check this thing out. So it does appear, as you're seeing, that there is uh, basically a 3D screen there, at least what it looks like. However, this is something we've seen before where it uses eye tracking to try to make the 3D appear to be popping off the screen. And I mean, the new 3DS XL has something where it does track your eyes to make the 3D look better. But this would be something, of course, that would be working straight up without the need for your TV to be a, essentially a dual screen that shifts a little bit to make your eyes kind of uh, go cross-eyed a bit or whatever. This is something that's set up so that the top camera essentially is tracking your glasses and giving depth to what's on the screen. And I said we've seen this before, and we have. So over 10 years ago, Johnny Lee posted a video that has amassed over 10 million views now on YouTube that shows this, pretty much this exact idea where he used a Wii remote to track the sensor bar, at which point it would make the objects on the screen, which use targets, to appear like they're jumping off the screen or to appear like you can look behind them or they have depth. That's exactly what this patent reminded me of. And when I saw it, I said, wait a minute, that's actually something that's, that's actually feasible. And I don't think it would cost a ton of money to do it. So I actually wonder if this is something Nintendo is seriously pursuing in the background. Maybe not exactly how they have it set up there where you get glasses and the thing that you put on the TV. Maybe they have it even, maybe even slimmer design. Uh, maybe they have it so that the camera is less obvious on your TV. It's uh. 
it's fascinating to see because I think that would actually be kind of interesting, would work fairly well for people to at least enjoy, I think, more than something like VR in its state right now, because this doesn't appear to be taking a lot of setup. You got glasses you put on, you have like a thing that you probably leave on the top of your TV if you're playing there, and then all of a sudden, the stuff on the TV looks way more obvious that it's like 3D and there's a lot of cool things they could do here. And it does kind of feel like at that point, kind of like the evolution of the 3DS because they're bringing that into like the, the home console setup and into the living room now. So if you could have what's essentially the 3D screen from the 3DS on your TV with minimal setup and Nintendo's like super creative and wacky first party division, they've done some cool stuff with that. Uh, they've done some cool stuff on the 3DS and I bet you they would get some cool stuff out of your TV that does that. That would be awesome. And I'm really curious if this is more of an idea that we're seeing now and more of a reality in the R&D department right now. So we'll see, but just remember this patent that we're looking at now, because if it does come out years later that they do put something out like this, it's, uh, it's going to be really neat, and we'll remember this patent kind of showing us an early sign at it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newsway. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button. really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about, whether it is the Smash Bros. data mining. What do you think about that? What do you think is going to be there? Do you think it's Piranha Plant? Do you think it's balancing? Do you think it's new stages? Let me know what you guys think about that down below. And then what about that 3D patent from Nintendo? Would you like to see them pursue something like that instead of VR? Remember, we were talking about VR constantly during the Switch's early days. Would you like to see them kind of pursue something like that instead? I would because it's different and honestly, I think it could grab on easier than VR now because there's less setup. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.